Kia ora Year 12. This video is the first one that I'm going to make on inverse trig functions and how we differentiate them. So in the new A-level syllabus from this year, you have to know how to differentiate the inverse tan function, but not the other two. But they're such nice little proofs and they're really um, just great pieces of mathematics that we're going to do all three anyway. So in this video I'm going to do the proofs but I'm not going to do any harder problems. The second video is going to be more on applications. And there's no good textbook work on this because it is um, quite new, so I'm using some of um, my old textbooks from elsewhere. Right, so let's first of all have a look at our trig functions and think about ideas back in AS about what's a function and what does a function need to be to be invertible. So the big idea behind a function is does it pass the vertical line test? Right, so if I look at this, can I whack a vertical line into my function, and oh, they're meant to be vertical lines guys, sorry, it's been a very long day, it's been a very long seven weeks, um, I'm looking to see whether the vertical lines cut once or more than once, and you can see that tan is a function because it passes the vertical line test. So let's now get rid of all of those vertical lines, what does it mean what does a function have to be to have an inverse? Well, on top of passing the vertical line test, it also has to pass the horizontal line test. Let's see if we can do a horizontal line. Yep, there we go. Right, so you can see that the tan graph passes both the functions test and the inverse test. And that's probably why it's the first one that they put into the syllabus, right? Because it's, it doesn't have to have anything complicated happen to it. We can find the inverse of this function. Remember, to find the inverse, we're switching x and y. So in this graph, this is the graph of y equals tan x. So the inverse of this graph is x is equal to tan y. Or we could write it as y is equal to tan inverse of x. So this is the thing that we want to learn how to differentiate. But this looks horrible. This is how we're going to differentiate it. So we're going to work with this form and use implicit differentiation. So before I do that, let's look at the graph for um, the inverse tan function. So here it is here. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, you can see that the highest possible value here is pi on 2, and the lowest possible value is negative pi on 2. Now, how come it goes on forever? Well, that's because if you look at the, the y values back in the tan graph, they go on forever to infinity and to negative infinity. Okay, so now let's look now at the sine curve. So the sine curve has got a problem when we try to invert it, which is that it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So the sine function is not one to one. So what that means is that if I tell you a y value, as we know from all of our trig, that y value could have come from an infinite number of x values. So when I go to try to inverse, that's to invert the sine curve, I need to put some limitations on. So looking at it, we can see that the y values here go between 1 and negative 1. So we know that when we do my sine inverse curve, they will become my x values. We're going to restrict ourselves to the part of the graph where we get a one-to-one -one function. And so it's this part here. Okay, so that's taking x values here from pi on 2 down to negative pi on 2. So these are going to become the y values when I invert it. And the graph looks like this. So there's my sine inverse curve. Now let's look at the cosine one, and it's the same kind of idea. Here's the cosine curve. And again, it's a function, but it's not one to one. So we have to restrict which part of the curve we're going to work with. So here we've got x is 0 and we've got x is pi. Maximum y value is, is 1. 
minimum y value is negative 1. So that's going to switch over when I invert it. Right, so x here goes from 0 to pi, and y goes from negative 1 to 1. So in the inverse function, x is going to go from negative 1 to 1, and y is going to go from 0 to pi. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, so you can see that that's what's happening here. So probably you're not going to see these graphs um, in the A-level course, but you may well see them. You'll definitely see them if you do Math 199 next year. They're a really important part of more advanced maths. So we're not going to shy away from doing these proofs, but we are going to start with the easiest one, which is the tan one. Okay, so let's go back up to my graph. So here's my graph of tan x, and here's my graph of of inverse tan x. So before we launch into differentiating, we should notice that this is an increasing function. So my derivative needs to be giving me a positive answer everywhere. So we'll start with writing out this function that we want to differentiate is this. But as we noted, it's easier to rewrite that as x equals tan y. Now all we have to do now is differentiate using the method of implicit differentiation. So we get 1 equals 6 squared y times dy by dx. Now if that's not feeling comfortable, you really need to go back and do some work on implicit using the old delta book. Okay, so here, 1 divided by 6 squared y gives me cos squared y is equal to my derivative. But that's not much use to me. I need to have it in terms of x. So this is where Pythagoras' theorem comes in. We know that tan y is equal to x. That was my starting point. So we can draw a right angle triangle. That's my angle y. And we can think of x as x over 1. That's the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite side is x long, and the adjacent side is 1 long. And that means that this side must be, by Pythagoras, the square root of 1 plus x squared units long. So we're going to use that because we need to find cos of y. But that's now a very easy problem, right? So cos of y is equal to a over h, which is 1 over root 1 plus x squared. So cos squared of y is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that's what dy by dx is. Okay, so I'm just going to review those steps again briefly. We started out with our inverse function, this thing here, but we have no clue how to differentiate that. We need to rewrite it as x equals tan y, that's this line, and then we differentiate implicitly. We rearrange it, and we get an expression that's still in terms of y. That's not much use, so we use Pythagoras to work our way back to an expression in terms of x. So the key to all three of these trig proofs is to take this little expression that we started with, this one up here, and turn that into a Pythagoras triangle. Okay, so we rewrite it like this, and then we see that my angle is y, and x is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's the first one done. Okay. We can write it out nicely like this. And that's all you need to know for A level, and then you need to be able to use that in harder problems. And that's what the next video will do. But let's just go on and do the same thing now for sine inverse and cos inverse. This is great practice of implicit differentiation. So we're going to start by rewriting as x is equal to sine y. Differentiate implicitly, and we get 1 equals cos y dy by dx which gives me dy by dx is equal to, well, we'll just leave it as 1 over cos y. We could turn it into sec, but we won't. Right, now let's look at the, the Pythagoras that we have to set up here, because it's a little bit different. It's not the same triangle as the tan one. My angle is y, and x is sine y. So o over h is equal to x over 1. This side is x, the hypotenuse is 1. 
So the adjacent side now must be 1, the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so what's cos of y? So dy by dx is equal to, or well, you can think of it as h over a, which is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So summarising that result, we get this. Now let's look at our graph and see one of the reasons that that makes sense is that this is always going to be positive, and that fits with my picture. I've got an increasing function. Okay, the last one. So we've got um, y is equal to cos inverse x, x is equal to cosine of y. We can see this one's decreasing, so we should be looking for a negative. 1 is equal to negative sine y, dy by dx. dy by dx is equal to negative 1 over sine y. Let's draw our triangle. Oop, bad triangle, right, there's y. Right, so x is cos over y, so x over 1 is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Mm, let's just squeeze this in. There we are. So that's doing Pythagoras backwards. So what's sine of y? So it's negative 1 over, right, sine of y is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, so finishing this one off, we get the derivative of the inverse cosine function is equal to negative 1 over root 1 minus x squared. So where are you going to use these? Well, in the next six months in your future, you're going to use the tan one in the A-level exam, and you're going to use maybe all three of them in harder scholarship calc problems, because they can um, make integration very easy. If you spot these patterns, some some nice simplification can happen. So it might save you doing a whole lot of work with a substitution or with integration by parts. Um, the next video is going to do some harder examples where we're going to look at things like, suppose I've got y is equal to tan inverse of 3x squared plus 4. What am I going to do with that? Okay, so the next video will be using the chain rule extensively and we'll take these three results as given. Thanks for watching. Um, let me know if there are any problems.